mechanical maestros have come together to try something very, very hard. Is it possible to take a tiny, well-known car from the 1960s, blow everything apart except for bits of the skin, then using said bits of skin, design and build a top-shelf today car that's fast and nimble? But it's a road car, so all that modern stuff's got to go inside. A turbocharger, a front differential for the anticipated all-wheel drive. It's going to be built by a race car engineer, so it'll have speed and power, but a top designer has to make sure it's drop dead gorgeous. On top of that, it has to have factory standard 2024 level off the lot quality. And you're gonna make this thing from scratch by hand? Where is this all going? Hold it. This is Dave Clem, and we're here to watch him work. He's been building race cars since 1970. He's won at Indy in Daytona. He's worked for Dan Gurney and Jim France. He gets in every morning at 6.30, and he can draw, tool, ride, drive, or fly just about anything. Some of the parts he builds are trophy-grade works of wonder. We invite you to watch him and a few other experts build an entire car during the very tough one-of-a-kind challenge called... That's right, Ratsofab, and we will explain the name. The Ratsofab Challenge is the brainchild of Miles Collier, who owns the world-renowned Collier Collection. More than a hundred beautiful and historically significant cars, which, when they're not at global events, tours, and shows, all reside at the Revs Institute in Naples, Florida. Most of the time, what we're trying to do is is uh, work on something and retain as much of its originality, however you want to define that as possible. So it's kind of like doing very serious neurosurgery and things. But in this shot where we're doing Ratsofab, this is where the unchained id is let loose mechanically. Here's the Ratsofab challenge. Select a classic sports car from the 60s, rip everything out from the puny engine to the AM radio, then design and build a new chassis and suspension and restyle nearly everything. Drop in a muscular Subaru engine from Vermont sports car, then cram the new body with state-of-the-art stuff. And the lucky car that Miles Collier has chosen is... Fiat basically make uh, lovely, highly Italianate, charming, fun, effervescent, and interesting little automobiles based on their brand new Fiat 850 that was supplanting the, uh, the Fiat 600 model. 59 horsepower, whatever it is, 850cc four-cylinder with motor in the back. And uh, it's about the size of a Austin Healey Bug Eye Sprite, or a, I don't know what it's the size of today. Maybe a smart car. And um, it, it's just a you know a, a lovely little thing. And I started thinking that you know what if one of those was brought up to modern performance parameters, both in its technology, in its drivability and uh, in its appearance. So that was sort of the genesis of, uh, of uh, Ratsofab. Okay, now that we know what the car is, we can explain the name, Ratsofab. Fab, of course, is short for fabrication, and Ratso is Italian for rocket. Ratsofab. <laughs> The 
idea was to make a 2023 automobile, not to do a 1964 automobile warmed over. And so you know, we've, we've made a lot of changes to it, but the whole point of starting with a Fiat 850 is presumably, and it's true, we like the Bertone body on it, so we've tried to maintain some faithfulness to the Bertone body, but everything else is up for grabs. We weren't uh, uh, meant to change the architecture of the car, which means we weren't going to make it a mid-engine or a front-engine car. It was going to stay the same architecture. What do you use the hardest part? Packaging. You know, I had certain constraints I had to work with. Uh, Mr. Collier said it has to fit within this body envelope. So I had to draw in every individual part in 3D and model it into the car. There was nothing strong enough in a Fiat to handle that horsepower and that torque. So we had to literally start from scratch. We're making pieces for the center floor. It's like laying a keel in a boat. We know that's a welding table. You can see it has all those holes. You can, you, there's pins that are made for that. And you'll see along the edge of the frame, you'll see there's pins and they're precise machine diameter, right? Those, so you can use them to square stuff up and, and be uh, pretty precise. So that's why we use that table sort of at the beginning of the assembly. laying out a piece of cardboard for a little piece of metal, which I'll show you later on what it, what it ends up being. But I'm making a paper pattern or a cardboard pattern that we're going to trace on a piece of metal. Do you refer to it as? CAD system. Cardboard aided design. Yeah, these are the pieces I made from the cardboard pattern. It's the piece I'm fitting right now. A prototype like this, it doesn't make any sense to set up a big $8 million machine to make a little part when you can make it by hand. And these are techniques that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is the side rails of the, the floor frame, and Pedro's cutting it off to a certain length. The, the piece of metal on top is actually a very accurate ruler scale. It has to be a certain length, so he's trimming it so it's just that length because he's going to be welding ends on it. What he's doing here is drilling a bleed hole. If you don't drill a hole in the material when you're welding it, it'll blow out. What kind of welding is that? It's called TIG welding, tungsten inert gas. I control the heat with a pedal. Sometimes just finding a way to hold the, the torch. It's got to be really steady. If it's moving, it'll burn a hole in it or the weld won't look very nice. So even at this point, part of the effort is aesthetic? Absolutely. You say the weld won't look very nice? Yeah, absolutely. Everything you do has to look good. If it looks good, it is good. How much has your welding improved, Pedro? A good amount, but it also, welding, if it's not something that you constantly practice, it's a thing that, that's a feel that kind of goes away. So you have to constantly train it. Really, 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 really. No, it's definitely improved. Once I started going to different events and everybody mentioned Dave Clem, I say, hey, you work with Dave Clem, say hi to him, say hi to him. So then I started Googling and learning more about him. Once I became knowledgeable, like I said, I mean, it's, yeah, he's completely easy. They don't, they don't make him like him anymore. Well, it's funny, I learned this 
stuff in high school. I mean, we had a complete machine shop in high school, lathe, milling machine, all this, the same stuff. Didn't make anything quite this elaborate, but at least we learned the basics. Knew we would have to literally start from scratch. That doesn't bother me. You know, I've done race cars from scratch. It's a challenge, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. Challenge number one, like I say, was drawing these components so I could position them. Uh, and it sounds like a minor thing, but it's not as major. You know, anytime I got to work with Mr. Clem, for me, it was a treat because, you know, it wasn't this project yet, but we were creating stuff and, and parts and fabricating things and learning how to tool these. And so that was always my, well, one of my favorite parts of working here was, was working with him and learning, you know, learning all the tool usage and creating stuff. It was like an art. You almost, it's like painting a picture. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's real cool. You have the insides of the car, which Dave and Pedro are building from scratch. But for the outside, you need this very sleek and very specific car shell, which was coming out during the 1960s. As they were being produced, one rider called Fiat Spiders cheap and meant it as a compliment. Spiders were affordable, but they were designed for a mild European climate. They didn't like Death Valley, and they hated Buffalo. All cars rust in salt water, but spiders did it quicker. So Ratzofab is not only about building a car, it's also about finding a car. Spoiler alert, difficulties ahead. There are no such thing as unrusted Fiat 850 spiders anywhere on the planet. Revs Institute is home to one of the great car collections in the world. But deep inside, there's a shop within a shop where something different is happening. We want to do this because it's, it's, we think it's possible. And that's, that's the charm of the thing, and it's going to be difficult. These six experts are trying to handcraft a road car based on a legend, using techniques developed by the masters of racing and design. When it's finished, it's got to feel like a car, but it's got to move like a rocket. It won't be easy. By taking on a car project like Ratzofab, among other things, we're raising the game of all the staff here. It's a difficult damn project. It's stretching everybody to the nth degree. Packaging. 